Williams was scheduled to perform at the Municipal Auditorium in Charleston, West Virginia on Wednesday, December 31, 1952. That day, because of an ice storm in the Nashville area, Williams could not fly, so he hired a college student, Charles Carr, to drive him to the concerts. Carr called the Charleston Auditorium from Knoxville to say that Williams would not arrive on time owing to the ice storm and was ordered to drive Williams to Canton, Ohio, for the New Year's Day concert there. They arrived at the Andrew Johnson Hotel in Knoxville, Tennessee, where Carr requested a doctor for Williams, as he was feeling the combination of the chloral hydrate and alcohol he had drunk on the way from Montgomery to Knoxville. Doctor P. H. Cardwell injected Williams with two shots of vitamin B12 that also contained a quarter grain of morphine. Carr and Williams checked out of the hotel, the porters had to carry Williams to the car, as he was coughing and hiccuping. At around midnight on Thursday, January 1, 1953, when they crossed the Tennessee state line and arrived in Bristol, Virginia, Carr stopped at a small all-night restaurant and asked Williams if he wanted to eat. Williams said he did not, and those are believed to be his last words. Carr later drove on until he stopped for fuel at a gas station in Oak Hill, West Virginia where he realized that Williams was dead. The filling station's owner called the chief of the local police. In Williams' Cadillac the police found some empty beer cans and unfinished handwritten lyrics. Dr. Ivan Malinin performed the autopsy at the Tyree Funeral House. Malinin found hemorrhages in the heart and neck and pronounced the cause of death as insufficiency of the right ventricle of the heart. That evening, when the announcer at Canton announced Williams' death to the gathered crowd, they started laughing, thinking that it was just another excuse. After Hawkshaw Hawkins and other performers started singing I Saw the Light as a tribute to Williams, the crowd, now realizing that he was indeed dead, sang along. Dr. Malinin also wrote that Williams had been severely beaten and kicked in the groin recently. Also local magistrate Virgil F. Lyons ordered an inquest into Williams' death concerning the welt that was visible on his head. His body was transported to Montgomery, Alabama, on Friday, January 2nd and placed in a silver coffin that was first shown at his mother's boarding house for two days. His funeral took place on Sunday, January 4 at the Montgomery Auditorium, with his coffin placed on the flower-covered stage. An estimated 15 to 25,000 people passed by the silver coffin, and the auditorium was filled with over 2,000 mourners. His funeral was said to have been far larger than any ever held for any other citizen of Alabama and the largest event ever held in Montgomery. Williams' remains are interred at the Oakwood Annex in Montgomery. The president of MGM told Billboard magazine that the company got only about five requests for pictures of Williams during the weeks before his death, but over 300 afterwards. The local record shop sold out of all of their records, and customers were asking for all records ever released by Williams. His final single released during his lifetime was titled I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive. Your Cheatin' Heart was written and recorded in NINTEEN 52 but released in NINTEEN 53 after Williams' death. The song was number one on the country charts for six weeks.